Antilia. The Phantom Island of Antilia was purportedly mapped by explorers in the 15th century. It was supposedly located at a great distance west of Portugal in the Atlantic Ocean. According to Iberian legend, upon the 9th century Muslim conquest of the peninsula, seven Christian bishops and their flocks fled by boat. The men landed on Antilia, where they each established a settlement. That's how the place earned its alternative moniker, the Island of the Seven Cities. The refugees allegedly lived on the isolated island, their own Christian utopia, until explorers visited 600 years later. They reported that the inhabitants spoke Portuguese. The explorers placed the island on maps for the first time, along with other nearby newly discovered islands. Historian Pedro de Medina reported the island had ports and rivers. To find it, sailors needed to head to the latitude of the Straits of Gibraltar. The island, he said, would be seen at a distance and disappear when approached. In 1475, King Alfonso V of Portugal granted the seven cities to the knight Fernão Teles. Rumor had it that mountains of silver could be found on the island. This drew countless mercenary conquistadors to a search for this place. The massive island, roughly 300 by 62 miles, began appearing on nautical maps at the time. Subsequent attempts to visit it failed. It seemed as if Antilia had disappeared. As cartographer Johannes Reus described on a 1507 map, quote, this island Antilia was once found by the Portuguese, but now, when it is searched, cannot be found. People found here speak the Hispanic language and are believed to have fled here in face of a barbarian invasion of Hispania in the time of King Roderick, the last to govern Hispania in the era of the Goths. Chronicler Antonio Galvao also reported that in 1447, a Portuguese ship sailed to the island and the crew met its inhabitants. Shortly after Christopher Columbus's 1492 expedition in which he discovered America, Antilia vanished from maps entirely. Ever since then, historians have posited that the explorers who discovered Antilia in 1414 misidentified it as an island, that the explorers had actually discovered America. Either way, its faux existence inspired the name of a very real archipelago in the Caribbean Sea, the Spanish Antilles. Isle of Demons In 1542, French noblewoman Marguerite de la Roque embarked on a trip to the New World with the Lieutenant General of New France. On the voyage, she fell in love with a young sailor who got her pregnant. The lieutenant, displeased, abandoned Marguerite, her lover, and her maid on an island somewhere off the Atlantic Ocean coast. According to her story, the infant died shortly after Marguerite gave birth on the island. She had a poor diet, and the baby wasn't drinking enough milk. Her lover and maid also passed away, and the woman spent much of her nearly three years on the island alone. She claimed that she was visited at night by demonic beasts that made frightening sounds. They tormented her, but never physically harmed her. Marguerite hunted wild animals to stay alive. She was eventually rescued by fishermen. The tale about her experience became popular. French Queen Marguerite of Navarre retold the anecdote in the Heptameron, a series of short stories published in 1558. As the legend spread, the so-called Island of Demons began appearing on maps. Sailors began reporting their ships had come under attack by wild beasts in the waters surrounding the island. But the land inexplicably disappeared from maps by the next century, with some wondering about the demons Marguerite claimed to have seen. Many believed that she may have actually been trapped in an uncharted island with unknown Native American inhabitants. It has also been suggested that the woman landed on Harrington Harbor in Quebec. Filippo and Pontchartrain Train Islands. According to legend, when French explorers were mapping the Great Lakes region of North America, they fabricated two islands in Lake Superior. Priest and traveler Pierre Francois Xavier de Charlevoix named them Filippo and Pontchartrain Train Islands. This was an act of shameless flattery for his patron, Louis Filippo, who was funding the expedition. The flattery worked and the royals continued funding the expeditions, while the islands solidified their place in 18th century maps. In 1744, French hydrographer Jacques-Nicolas Bellin included the islands on one of his maps, midway between Isle Royale and the Keweenaw Peninsula. In 1755, the Mitchell map was used in the peace talks that resulted in the 1783 Treaty of Paris that ended the Revolutionary War. It established a new political border between the US and the then British colonies in present-day Canada, 
awarding the islands to the U.S. The map established that the boundary ran, quote, through Lake Superior, northward of the Isles Royale and Philippo to the Long Lake. It wasn't until a survey to formalize international boundaries in 1820 that surveyors failed to discover the islands. It's believed these phantom islands were only created to favor Louis Philippo, Comte de Pontchartrain. John Mitchell, the Mitchell map creator, had just copied the faux island from another map and had been unaware of the fraud. It wasn't unusual for ancient maps to contain islands that never truly existed. However, this fraud went on for nearly a century. Malachi Talek, the author of The Undiscovered Islands, said to the National Geographic, quote, This little lie that an explorer told became entangled in a really important part of history. Crockerland. In 1906, explorer Robert Peary launched an expedition to find the North Pole. He was desperate to become the first man to set foot on it. But due to storms and lack of supplies, his mission failed, and he was forced to set a course back for home. As he was sailing near Ellesmere Island, however, he spotted a previously undiscovered landmass. He named it Crocker Land, after financier George Crocker, one of his financial backers. Unable to visit the purported island, the American Museum of Natural History commissioned anthropologist Donald McMillan to lead an expedition. His mission was to confirm Crockerland's existence, map it, and search for undiscovered plants, animals, or people who called it home. The arduous journey at sea sank one of the expedition's two ships. Eventually, the team of a dozen men and their Inuit guides set up base camp and spent weeks preparing for the planned 1,200-mile dog sled ride to the area of Crockerland. On the journey, the explorers faced temperatures of negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. One of them got frostbite, and half the team decided to return to base camp. Only McMillan and a guide made it to where Crocker Land should have been. After weeks of trekking through the ice, one of the explorers suddenly yelled out, quote, We have it! The men saw hills, valleys, and snow-capped peaks. But when they turned to their Eskimo companions, they disregarded it as Puchak, or Arctic mist. The explorers pressed on for five more days, but could never reach the alleged island. The men had been tricked by a mirage known as Fata Morgana, in which atmospheric conditions distort distant objects. This made the ice on the horizon look like mountains on an island. Explorer Donald B. McMillan wrote on his account of the events, quote, We were convinced that we were in pursuit of a will of the wisp, ever receding, ever changing, ever beckoning. My dreams of the last four years were merely dreams. My hopes had ended in bitter disappointment. Long after Peary's death, it was discovered that Crocker Land had been an invention. Peary came up with the island to name it after his benefactor, hoping to secure $50,000 for his next expedition to the North Pole. But the financier used his money to rebuild San Francisco after the 1906 earthquake, and Peary was left with nothing. Sandy Island The first record of Sandy Island dates back to 1876. The whaling ship Velocity reported sighting it off the coast of New Caledonia in the South Pacific. This earned the supposedly octagonal landmass a place in an Australian maritime directory. The island had been charted near the Chesterfield Islands. At the time, it was customary to list all potential navigation hazards on charts, and that's how Sandy Island earned a spot in official hydrographic charts of the late 19th century. The Australian Hydrographic Service estimated that the island had a depth of 4,882 to 7,720 feet below sea level. However, numerous attempts to confirm the island's existence failed, leading some to question whether it even existed at all. Hydrographic charts would eventually add the abbreviation ED, which stands for Existence Doubtful, next to the place's markings. In 1979, the French Naval and Oceanographic Service removed the island from its nautical charts. However, when the U.S. military was digitizing physical maps of lands and political boundaries, it included Sandy Island in its World Vector Shoreline Database. According to reports, this led to its 21st century appearance as a legitimate island on Google Earth. On November 22, 2012, Australian scientists set out near the island to study tectonic plates. After seeing the island marked on the map, they decided to sail to it, but they were unable to find the landmass or ocean floor depth below 4,300 feet. The lack of evidence led to Sandy Island being erased from all maps. Juan Valdez, a geographer at National Geographic, said, quote, Full evidence has finally been presented. Sandy Island has now been officially stricken from all National Geographic map products. Google also erased the island from its map, although people continue to post faux pictures of the landmass as a joke. Author Malachi Talek thinks that islands have a remarkable ability to pull on human imagination, quote, 
Because their borders are well-defined, we can project our ideas onto them much more easily than we can with other places. While some maintain the island was real, others postulate the whaling ship did not really see an island. Instead, the sailors must have observed pumice sea rafts, ejected from an underwater volcano near Tonga. Another intriguing possibility comes from the native legend of Te Manu. This sunken Atlantis-like island was long considered a fantasy. But in 2016, oceanographic surveys confirmed the Pacific Island civilization may have collapsed in an earthquake. Then the landmass was probably covered by the post-glacial sea level rise. The same thing may have happened to Sandy Island, but for now, its fate remains unknown. <laughs>